You're not going to stop a determined thief. What you're hoping to do is stop the opportunist. Like I say, there's nothing you can do to stop a determined thief. But you Well, those clips you just watched were from a video called Trailer Thief Stopped that Linda and I did a while back. And so far it's had, oh, getting close to 300,000 views and over 1,500 comments. And I learned a lot about trailer security from those comments. And I want to share with you what I learned. But uh, let's go inside. It's kind of nasty out here. First of all, I'd like to discuss just exactly what it is we're trying to accomplish. I mean, there's no way that you're going to take your trailer and turn it into Fort Knox or some kind of bank vault. Any lock made can be picked or defeated in one way or another. And I don't care how much money you spend on their lock, on that lock, there's always a way to get into it. But what I try to do is to put down layers of defense. And the reason for that is to make your trailer inconvenient to, t to steal it so that a thief will just bypass you and go somewhere else. And that's another thing too. It's what kind of trailers are being stolen. I learned from, uh, from Ron Lee at Proven Industries that, uh, who makes a really good lock, and we're going we're to go over that lock here and later in the video. But I learned from Ron Lee that cargo trailers and boat trailers and utility trailers are the top trailers being stolen today. And you could probably throw some small camp trailers in with that too. The thing is that, and not, I'm not saying that other trailers don't get stolen or motor homes and things like that. They do, but um, predominantly it's especially cargo trailers. And there's a reason for that. Cargo trailers are normally used for what? People doing commercial um, home repair and yard service. Uh, people hauling their Harley Davidsons. In, in our case, down in the incident we mentioned down in Mesquite, where we uh, uh, caught a thief trying to, uh, we didn't actually catch him, but we chased him off, trying to steal our trailer, he had probably looked through the windows and saw the handlebars of my ATV. So they're not really so much after your cargo trailer as they are what's inside that can be taken to a pawn shop and fenced or gotten rid of somehow. They're after hand tools and, and power tools and things like that. And what I'm saying here is that the more your trailer looks like it's a camp trailer, the less likely it is that it's going to be stolen. I mean, or broken into. What thief wants to uh, break into a camp trailer and steal plastic forks and paper plates? No, they're after stuff that they can sell quickly and easily. So for the purpose of this video, we're not going to talk about uh, passive things like uh, GPS. We're not going to talk about insurance. We're not going to talk about the serial number on your trailer. We're not going to talk about things that you do after your trailer is stolen. We can get to that in another video perhaps. But on this video, we're going to talk about deterrence. Okay, so stick with me on that. One thing that was mentioned over and over and over and over again, many times, was that when you get to your destination to remove your wheels, to jack your trailer up and remove your wheels. Now, I don't know about you, but when I get to my campsite for the night, just because I want to go down to the stream or go up the road a little bit and do some fishing, I'm not about to take my wheels off. But, let's say you're storing your, your trailer in a storage facility, and you want to make it safe, you know, while it's in there. Um, removing the wheels is probably a good idea. Jack the frame up nice and level, but don't just remove, don't remove the lug nuts and remove the wheel. Pop this hub off and remove the whole drum and bearing assembly. Because when you do that, it makes it so a thief isn't going to come in there with just a couple of trailer tires that he bought down at the nearest farm supply store, because they come with a wheel and tire and everything all made up for you. No, he would have to come back with a drum and bearing assembly too. So if you're going to do it, do it right. It's easy. Pop the hub off, remove the cotter pin, back off the nut, pull the whole thing off. You'd be a lot safer that way. Another area you want to look is your ball hitch lock on here. I'm going to go over this Proven Industries lock here in just a little bit. But 
you want to make sure that your ball hitch is secured to your frame. Now my frame here is aluminum so I can't weld these two but I did have this nut back here welded on just recently so they can't just back this bolt get this bolt out. I couldn't do it on the front one because I, I would be uh, interrupting uh, uh, being able to ma maintain my chains or replace my chains if I did that because they're actually attached to this bolt. But you want to make sure that they can't get this ball hitch off of the frame. Previously I showed you that it's a good idea to remove your chains because it doesn't give a thief anything to hook up to unless he brings his own chains, which is probably doubtful on the spur of the moment. But I was using a smaller snap link. This is the one that goes to my car. I was using another one that was designed for boat trailers to uh, go back here, but it was suggested to me that I get something that's definitely rated to the strength of the chain. And uh, these connectors are, these are rated to 5,000 pounds. And remember, this is a 6x10 all aluminum cargo trader, so this is good for me. Whatever you do, you make sure that, that number one, this is okay in your state, and number two, which I don't really care about if I'm trying to keep my trailer from being stolen, but number two, make sure that whatever you do here is the same rating as the chain on the trailer you're trying to protect. Got it? I was using this style of boot. This one's made by Trimax, and these are actually pretty good. Um, you know, a thief is going to actually have to cut through this. There is one fault with it. Let me show you what it is. Okay, normally this boot is, is uh, put on the front of the tire, and it also acts like a, like a chalk here. And it's put on like that and locked by pushing this down. Of course, I wouldn't have this other chalk in behind here. But if somebody goes to steal your trailer and they tow, they pull it forward on this, this, this boot rolls around. It ends up being drug on the other side going down the highway. That's the problem with the Trimax boot. But it is another deterrent. And you know, somebody, if, you know, if they gotta take the time to get this off, they're also gonna think twice about taking your outfit. Now, Proven Industries has sent me this boot, and I'll start by telling you I like it a lot, but we're gonna review it in a later video. This one will not roll around and drag on the back. But what I wanted to show you here right now is you need to put on a couple of lock nuts. You can put on five lock nuts, anti-theft lock nuts on here. Make them two or three different types if you want to, to make it hard for a thief to get this wheel off and put a spare on or something like that. I'm going to review these in this video, these Proven Industry puck locks. And I put those on the side door and on my cargo door. And on the inside of my cargo door are barrel bolts that are locked from the inside. There's no way you're getting the back door open. You can take those puck locks off of there, but you can't get in. Now, it's like I said at the beginning of this video, any lock can be defeated. So I know Bosnian Bill and the lock picking lawyer can get into these puck locks, but this particular kind of lock takes a special tool. And it's not something the average person is likely to have. Also, they're doing it sitting at a table you know, in a comfortable warm house and we're talking about somebody trying to steal your trailer maybe in the middle of the night or something. So just put on the best lock you can have. What I normally, what I originally had on here was just some cheap master locks that could be defeated. You could smack them with a hammer and open them. So, and you know, of course this can always be cut through. It's like I say, there is no way to stop a determined thief, but we're gonna do more and more layers and just keep the uh, the opportunist out. That's what we're doing here. Another thing to do when you get to your campsite is put your struts down and jack the nose up. Raise the trailer up. Make it so that they have to lower the nose and retract those struts before they can tow your trailer away. It's another layer. Some other things that were mentioned for protecting your trailer were um, running a chain through your wheels and around your axle. 
I used to do that. I used a logging chain. That's a pretty tough chain. Uh, it's a rated, good rated chain. Uh, or you can use case hardened chain, which is expensive. You buy it by the foot, and it's you can't get through that with bolt cutters, especially where it's at underneath the trailer. The only thing is that I didn't like, I went to a boot because it was so much easier just to put on and take it off and I didn't have to crawl around under the trailer to do that. Another thing that was mentioned is um, a removable tongue. Now you can actually buy those for boat trailers and it would probably work pretty well on a smaller trailer. And that's where the tongue of the trailer actually comes off in a new one and, and, and bolts back on but I opted to use the ball hitch lock and I'm, I'm going to go over that in a minute, the one I've got. But remember, the, the main thing is that you're making it difficult. You're just, these are just deterrents. There is a fellow that made a comment on, the, on that last video. He said he had a 9 foot by 27 foot wooden shed on skids. You know, no wheels. We're talking like log skids underneath. And that was stolen off his property. So remember, the determined thief, <laughs> they're going to take something if they want it. But you do what I'm telling you to do, and, and you're not going to have any problems in traveling with your trailer. It would be a rare deal. You just make it difficult for them, and you're going to be all right. Now, my point in all of this is that hardware beats software. The main thing is to keep your trailer from being stole, stolen to begin with. And for you people that are just getting involved with uh, traveling with your trailer, don't be afraid. Just take precautions and get out there on the road and enjoy yourself. Well, this is the Proven Industries Puck Lock. And you can see it takes a, a rounded key. And it takes a special tool to pick this lock. And of course, it can be done easily sitting at a bench, I suppose. But out in the, out in the wilderness, out in the wild, I don't think this lock would be that easy to pick. It slides open like that. Now this is the same lock that we have on the back of our trailer too. And this lock got full of dust. Both of those back there got full of dust. And uh, they still work great. But you can flush this out with water. You can flush it out with brake cleaner or something like that. Squirt it with a little dry lube. Because this comes out like this, you can get at it, clean it out if you have to. And uh, I think they're great. Now this is anodized aluminum. However, um, they do come in a stainless steel model, which is really hard to, uh, to break into. And you can look at their website and look that over. Like that. I think they're great. You can't break into these with, uh, you can't get a cable cutter on them and uh, you're not going to get a, di a disc grinder on them or anything like that. Uh, not easily. This is, a, this is a great lock. This piece of junk is what I had on the ball hitch to start out with. <laughs> and uh, now in my defense, I did say that this was a cheap one and there was better ones out there. So I got a better one now. Let me show it to you. Okay, this is Proven, in Proven Industries ball hitch lock. And um, it's all made out of quarter inch steel. All American made steel. In fact, all of the materials that Proven Industry uses is American made and they are entirely made in the United States. This part of the lock, you just uh, snap up in your, in, the, in your ball hitch and put the lever down that holds this up. And then you just slide this over and put the puck lock in the front. Like that. So we ended up liking those proven locks a lot. They're easy to put on and uh, we felt secure with them on there. I think they're about the best you can get in today's market. So in the next video, we're going to talk about the Proven Locks boot. And uh, that's really special. If you could only have one thing, that would be it. 
But uh, that's, that's for another video. Stick around for that one. Anyways, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and see you around. So we didn't know that you were still videoing? I know. Because, Sorry. like, you told us that, like, you were done, so we, we didn't even know. And like and look, subscribe. <laughs> look what I have to put up with. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>